Greetings fellow adventurers, my name is Vith Leahane and welcome to the uh, Jagatai Khan, the Great Khan of Warhammer, voice acted 40k lore, entire character history by the Amber King. Also my apologies for this intro. <laughs> I was eating a snack, some biscuits and I was like, okay, well, let me swallow this and prepare to start. So I prepared to start the video. I went to the start recording thing with my mouse. I was like, let me swallow this and drink something and then we can start. And my finger slipped and I started the video, <laughs> the recording. And I'm like, you know what? We're, we're rolling with this. We're going with it. it it's, it's going. So, yeah. So I finished. I watched um, I watched the Lion's Lore from the Amber King, the Dark Imperium Trilogy with Gilliman, uh, Corvus Corax, and now I finished with Conrad Curse. So we're going to the, to the con. <laughs> There's one guy in the comments that keeps... <laughs> Keeps wanting me to watch this one so badly and I'm like, you know from the things I've seen about the con He does sound like one of my favorites when it comes to the Primarchs anyway, so you know what? Might as well just do it. It sounds like a great time. So yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Um Okay, video prepared everything good It's not even properly prepared before starting <laughs> uh, I was just having a snack like time because I did not eat anything in a long time but we're good, we're good, let's go. Actually, let me just quickly drink something. Uh... Okay, there we go. Let's go! So I've heard about the Khan, that he's kind of a rogue so god. So I fight for a father I never loved. Oh? Against a brother that I did. Oh, uh, we are already starting with something so heavy. He means, he definitely means Magnus, right? I've seen a short from, I think it was from uh, Adeptus Anonymous on YouTube, I think it was about the Khan and Magnus, something about like asking the, like asking, asking a shard of Magnus, I think it was, how to restore him. So he means Magnus, right? He definitely means Magnus here. At least I hope I'm not wrong. I defend an empire that never wanted me against an army that would have taken me in a heartbeat. Interesting statements from the very get-go. Like, it's a fair point that... Um, he's, he feels a bit different than most of the other Prime... I mean, all of them feel different, like, different between each other. But he's the one that I... does not feel so out there like most of the others. He's the one that feels more obscure in a way, more in the background compared to some others that are like so much more in front of the, the events because i barely ever hear about him i've heard some things about him but compared to any other of the primarchs i feel like i barely heard anything ab about this one about jagat icon also him and his uh white scars are like mongolian themed i think but you know instead of like having horses like mongolians used to they were really big on horses they have like jet bikes and walkers and they also run very quickly <laughs> to their enemies which is kind of cool i love speed a lot so that's a great thing to me in my opinion but yeah let's go looking to support the amber king channel fenris workshop are offering a fantastic deal on their wargaming products with green stuff world's gorgeous range of basing materials all these things I'm looking at, I have no idea what any of that means. Resin objects and hobby tools. You I don't know what any of that is. Perfect scenery for your what am I? From oh. the snow-capped mountains of Fenris to the grassy plains of Chagoris, mesmerizing Xenos worlds, oh. all the way to the crumbling ruins at the Siege of Terror. And for those Great. looking to save money, get amazing discounts on the range of second-hand miniatures Fenris Workshop has There's available. There's even a... There's even a second hand market. Also, oh, YouTube did a pop up. Overall, how useful are the captions in this video? There's only automated ones. What do you mean? I don't Build care. Build that force you always dreamed about without breaking the bank. If I ever started building an army, it would either be the Ultramarines or the Lamenters. One of those two. Fenris Workshop's Order of the Stormcaller's loyalty program offers a fantastic range of rewards cash back I, I, wait why am i looking at the ad what why am i looking at the damn ad yeah let's let's start chogoris here we go there i mean the home the home planet 
Here we go. Here's the great story beginning that we all so anxiously awaited for. Warriors of Chagoris, brothers of the great tribe, the Star Hunt calls you. Do you not hear it? The battle's red edge is your home. The respect of your kinsmen, your hurt. Plunge into the enemy's breast like a blade, cut out his heart, and you will know fulfillment. The Emperor has given us strength. Also, that statement is kind of true to the White Scars. They kind of live by that. That, yeah, you will, they will know and join because they actually do love the battle. They actually do revel in the battle compared to some other of the Space Marines. The White Scars really, I mean, they're, they are called the laughing killers. Sometimes they even like, go into the battle laughing, right? And stuff like that. So that's something compared to the others. In return, we give him victory. The victory. barbarian, the warhawk, the great Kagan, the untrusted but yet respected Primarch of the Fifth Legion. Untrusted? The white scars, Jagatai Khan, a figure of mystery whose legacy as the reclusive conqueror has echoed for over 10,000 years. Overlooked by his brothers, by his Imperium, and those who fell into the trap of failing to look below the surface. The choice- Yeah, there's a lot more to him that's, than it seems. This and decisions of this so-called barbarian Primarch shaped humanity forever. But who is the man behind the walk? Who is underneath the mystery of the Great Kagan? Who is the man, Jagatai, and what shaped him? His story begins at the end of the 30th millennium. A gestation capsule was hurtling through the warp, claws and teeth scratched upon its reinforced surface, as creatures of nightmare and madness tried to get to the prize within. Re-emerging back into real space, the battered capsule was interfered with. Divine hands took it within its clutches as it hurtled towards the grey, desolate world of What do you mean? What? Whose hands? What? What? Chemos. What, what? what do you mean? The capsule was redirected, its fate changed forever, as this mysterious entity swapped it with another, directing the burning treasure towards a new destination. Are you telling me that the Khan was originally supposed to end up somewhere else? Or what are you saying by that? The capsule began to enter a planet's atmosphere, hurtling down with all the grace and violence of a falling star, roaring and crashing into the earth. Amidst the smoke and fire, a child crawled out from the wreckage. Opening his eyes for the first time, he looked up to the azure skies. No fear or terror gripped him, only confusion. This child was special. He began to adapt, rationalize, and comprehend his surroundings at a speed and depth that was beyond an ordinary human. Yeah. Alone, with no sense of who or what he was. But he did have a lot of stuff imprinted onto him by the Emperor. The child began to wander his new temperate home. Deep within the Yasan sector of the galaxy, on a world dominated by lush greenery, soaring mountains, and azure seas, and great plains, this unique child wandered the planet of Mundus Planus, Chagoris. What? Oh, oh, there we go. I was like, wait, that, what? Not Chagoris? But no, it is Chagoris. A world with a singular, vast continent. Chagoris it is looks a it looks pretty. World home to a human civilization that had suffered the devastating consequences of old night. Wait, wait. At the same time, I just realized something. The thing that uh, Comrade Kerr said about how some of them ended up so perfectly on worlds that fit them so much, and like they're basically they're the, the way they are genetically made. It would be crazy, even more like uh, fortifying to that theory of his, which already is kind of like. They proved at this point, but even like even more, if the people on the planet that he fell on, that uh, the the Kai, the, I mean the Khan fell on, is like filled with Mongolian-looking people, just like his. It's just yeah. Also, why does the title say Jagatai Khan? Isn't there a, an H in there in the name? There's supposed to be an H, right? Like oh, or is it Jagatai Khan? 
and the great Khan. Wait, isn't Khan like just said the same way in his name? Or I'm confused now. I thought it's like Khan like here, like in the great Khan in his name too. That, that, that's weird. The collapse of the galaxy spanning civilization of mankind. For thousands of years, war storms had ravaged the sector, isolating oh. Jagoris from the wealth and resources of its neighboring worlds. It sounds like it's a world that's reached on its own already anyway. Like, how bad can it be? It's, it's kind of interesting, though, that some worlds just get isolated by stuff like warp storms and other threats out there. So they are basically... It's, it, it's so weird from us, like viewer perspective to think that that's just us in our normal world we, we we don't have access to the stars and in 40k it's kind of weirder for like for that to be the case <laughs> knowledge power and wealth bled until humanity had regressed the sword bow and rudimentary black powder weapons ruled this feudal world Mongolian. The far west, deep inside the vast steppe lands known as the Empty Quarter, that the child began to roam. At the banks of the Kuan River, the young boy caught his first glimpses of humanity. He saw a tribalistic people, his superhuman mind registering their weapons, their horses, all the information he could gather but yet distinctly lacking an understanding of the people he was looking at. Ong Khan, the leader of his Talskar tribe, stared back at the seemingly helpless boy, and he knew immediately there was something different about him. His very presence inspired awe, but most distinctly was a fire in his eyes. Oh. Um, Khan declared that this child was a gift from the gods, and he took in this young boy. I mean, you know what the funny thing is? It's kind of true. Not, it's, it, it is a gift from the gods. Uh, you know, the chaos gods, <laughs> in a way, technically, right? Because they are the ones that sent, he, sent him here along with the rest unless again there's other theories but you know, you know what i mean you know, you know what i mean and at the same time even if it was the emperor he's still considered a god but more more of an unwilling choice to send or maybe willing i don't again too many theories to know what's actually the case giving him shelter food a family and a name Jagatai. The Talskar shared everything with Jagatai. He was taught everything of their ways, their lifestyles, and the morality of tribal life. Oh. Honor, honor to the tribe, honor to the land, and honor to the storm seers, the Zadrin Aga, the, the shamans who guided and preserved the tradition to the tribe, oh. as well as being an invaluable advisor in the matters of the gods and the powers bestowed upon them, and the lessons of control. I talked about something before in another video, and I'm gonna say it again. I cannot see these kind of people, like this kind of like Mongolian based people for some reason, and not think of uh, Mountain Blade. For some reason, it keeps coming to my mind whenever I see them. Whenever I see Mongolians or any Mongolian like aesthetic kind of looking thing, it always goes back specifically to Mountain Blade Warband. And uh, I forgot the name that they had in that one. But you know, they were the purple guys in, in Warband. It keeps coming to my mind for some reason. Lest the Yaksha, the demons, punish your I played that game a lot. Arrogance. The young Jagatai began to grow quickly. Even his intellect and strength was progressing so fast, he would best even the adults in combat and match and even outwit the wisdom of the Storm Seers. Jagatai learned everything his people could give him, but most importantly was their spirit. On horseback, roaming the vast plains, the azure skies above, the sun on his face, feeling the adrenaline flowing as the wind hit his face. Hunting, fighting off rival tribes, drinking the fermented milks and wine of his people. It was freedom. It's also so messed up how there are so many Primarchs that basically had an easier, happier time before they were they were found by the Emperor. Like, he sounds like he's actually having a good life, so like, 
so far. Uncaged. That sensation of staring at a sunset, feeling in tune with the world. What would you give for that feeling? Jagatai was special. His strength, his intellect, his ability to understand and adapt was frightening. Even being in his presence for the first time was overwhelming. But behind this prominent form was a young boy who pondered. Rival step tries began to fear him because of this seemingly superhuman warrior who began to preach and talk what was beyond the constant warfare that dominated life on the steps. The young Talskar warrior sent from the gods was a figure of awe and a conjurer of jealousy. But Jagatai's fast-paced, freedom-filled existence wouldn't last, and it would soon change forever. Uh, uh, the Emperor? The Emperor? His father, Omni yes. Khan, was dead. Oh, never by mind. Talskar's rivals. I mean, I was somewhat close. It was his father, but not his original one. <laughs> but, oh, I... I, yeah, I really misunderstood the situation. It's not the coming of the Emperor, it's the coming of this guy's death. Yes. The hated Kurae tribe, a rage. So apocalyptic in its release gripped Jagatai. He screamed for vengeance. The young man, barely a few years old, but at the same height of his elders, gathered his people as the greatest Talskar warrior he'd led them to war. War. Attacking the Kurier tribe but and where is the hammer? to the ground, killing every man, woman, and child in a con Okay, well that was certainly very thorough and war crimey. <laughs> Cophony of swift, brutal vengeance, taking the Kurier Khan's head and mounting it upon his tent. As the Talskar swore fealty to their new leader, Jagatai Khan. This brutality of tribal life was the other side to all that he loved about it. The vengeance was complete, tribal honor restored, but as the anger began to fade, the quiet, pondering boy was not happy. It was a waste, this pointless inner tribal conflicts. The spirit of Chogorus was within him. He loved to fight. He loved the rush of the wind. They all did, the people of the steppe. They were brothers, all of them. Perhaps it was a philosophy created in his superhuman mind. Even the hacking horse has a, a like, um, a lightning symbol on its head. Like, yeah, fast speed. Or perhaps it was in the blood. Jagatai Khan and his Talskars rode out, clashing with the other warring tribes. I mean, it's, it's kind of messed up though. <laughs> That he got a taste for fighting and decided, yeah, let's just go and keep fighting and keep killing people. <laughs> That's what we are having fun with. Let's keep doing that. It's a waste not to do that. A combination of the brilliant strategies and exceptional prowess of Jagatai broke their enemies. I mean... One by one, they were all defeated. It is useful in more current times, even though he's, I think he's gone in current times. Like, not dead, but like just disappeared or something. Um, but... Doing normal kind of thing is it's kind of weird, right? <laughs> kind of messed up to some degree. The tribes of Heilun, the Kilhan, Hauja, Sezjak, and the High Zul. All... I feel I just hearing those names. I feel like somebody is cursing me in some weird language that I've never heard before. All at the feet of this new Khan did not find death. But they were welcomed like brothers, absorbed into Jagatai's family, welcomed as Talskars. Wait, that's kind of that. Okay, so it's not total annihilation. It's not total war. Warhammer. <laughs> that's a game. <laughs> I'm trying to be funny, but no, it's not that. He did not just go and kill everybody. He actually, I guess, maybe killed their leader and they basically take them in to become his own people. A fate unheard of in the millennia of brutal tribal warfare. The Mal Thuli, the irresistible force, bows to their Khan. Each splinter unit led by men who are promoted based on meritocracy, ending the old feudal ways of inheritance. Ears. 
Because why would you just have your own ears when you can have even more to hear for you? Ha ha ha. Try to hear of your accomplishments to brag to the tribe. Dead ward, killed and stolen from each other for centuries, found themselves fighting side by side, riding in the saddle as one force, one army, one people. They bled Unified. together, drank together, I followed the vision of Jagatai Khan together, an unstoppable brotherhood of warriors. Imagine standing before the Khan, how earth-shattering his presence felt, how your admiration and respect flowed from the acknowledgement of his prowess and his greatness. The man who had bound your people together, each clan, fingers in a curled fist that smashed your enemies apart. It would be this great growing horde that would draw the attention of more dangerous foes. To the east, oh? outside the empty quarter lie great kingdoms and empires. Wait, you're telling me that all- I thought that the whole thing that happened with him spread across the entire planet, but no, it was just like a, a one region of the planet. There were actually like kingdoms and other things out there, not only this tribal nonsense, there, there are actual kingdoms. Feudal civilizations with black powdered weapons and high walls. Greatest of all was the Palantine, an emperor to a corrupt empire whose packs of greedy, self-absorbed nobles would often roam the edges of the steppe lands, hunting and attacking the tribal people for sport. Ten I'm, you know, a reckoning is coming, a reckoning is coming and we all want to see it, right? <laughs> we all love to see people like that get what's coming to them. In summers after his arrival on Chagoris, as his tribe moved to their winter settlements, a vast avalanche caught Jagatai off guard and he and his personal guard were swallowed up by the rushing snow. Alone, Jagatai survived. I was gonna say, a Primarch, sure, he can survive an avalanche. Those people with him, they're just normal people. There's no way they can survive. So yeah, they, they died. His loyal brothers all dead. And just as how he had arrived in Chagoris, he was again alone. It was in his journey to return to his people that Jagatai was attacked by a Palantine aristocratic hunting band. The arrogant men underestimated the tribal savage before them. They're like, ugh, another stupid monkey person thing that's not even like a real person to us. We are, we advanced, noble, aristocratic people. These are like animals compared to us. Just another filthy animal for us to hunt. Yes, let's go. They had no idea what you were, <laughs> they had no idea what you were in the presence of. Would be their last mistake as Jagatai tore them limb from limb, fighting yeah. with blinding speed and aggression. Was anybody ex expecting anything else hearing this? One lone survivor returned, bearing a note from Jagatai, declaring that the people of the steppes were no longer the Palantine's toys, alongside the severed head of a man who was the Palantine's very own son. Deserved, you know what? It sounds like the son was just as bastardly as his father, just hunting these people. So, deserved. The enraged Emperor of the East assembled an enormous force. Men clad in heavy steel with- Okay, how many people, how many normal people would it even take to kill somebody like the Khan? And depending on their te technology, it, like the difference can become even, even worse, right? That's for sure. I mean, he's not having his normal future, I mean, war gear made from the finest materials, strongest materials, stuff like that. He's using tribal nonsense and whatnot found on his on this planet. But he's still he's still a Primarch. Guns marched to Jagatai's home, but found not a pathetic gathering of tribes in simple girths, but a well-disciplined, motivated horde. The Mathuli strode out, and utilizing the speed of an entire mounted force, they tore the armored warriors apart, showering arrows as if the very heavens rained death. The force was utterly annihilated. The men of the East had tried to destroy them, their home, their culture, their way of life, but Jagatai wouldn't let that happen. 
In the wake of this glorious victory, the superhuman young man became the Kagan, the Khan of Khans of the Oh, that's what the Kagan actually means? The Khan of Khans? Empty quarter, the rightful ruler of all of its people. Men, such as Targetai Yasuge, Quinn Shah, Giyu Hun, and Hasek. Again, no, I... The, is anybody watching this? Like, anybody at all? A single person? Actually expecting me to remember any of those names? Because I won't. I'm saying, uh, uh, from the very start... I wait, was it this video or another one I recorded? In some video, either this one or another, I said at the very start I, that I'm very bad with names. And I am. I'm very, very bad with remembering names. So I'm not gonna remember any of those names. And also, why is there a white line at the very, like, side of, like, the right side of the video? Like, where I'm looking, why, why is there a white line there? Okay, that's weird. Anyway, friends and brothers who had been by his side followed their Kagan out of the empty quarter, the dust gathering at their feet as they- Also, he's- he's a- uh, what is that called? Is that called a goatee or- I don't know. Why does it look like the Reddit, like, downvote button? Like, you can see the arrow. <laughs> it's like a down arrow. Set out to conquer the world. Kingdoms and empires over decades began to fall. Cities would look out to find this disciplined horde outside their gates. They were offered one chance to surrender or be destroyed. After how great the reputation for destroying became, who in their right mind still thought they can actually defy them and the like fight them? The example of that refusal was a warning others dared not to repeat. Each king and emperor he slew, Jacktai became more and more disgusted with them. How fat, lazy, and corrupted they had become. I love that. You know what the most messed up thing is? There's so many people out there that are disgusted by stuff like that. But the moment they, have, they, they, they get the chance to become that themselves, basically get all of that luxury and... They freedom to do whatever they want and authority. So many people would go for it. And I know it's very it's very easy to say that you wouldn't and stuff like that, but feeling that power can corrupt. Even I'm one of the people that say that no matter what happens, even if I had money a lot, I would not fall into that depravity. Like I'm I'm not the fool to say one hundred percent that that would would not be the case, but I'm pretty Strong in my morals, I would say. So I, I, I still believe in that. The obscene displays of wealth, the utter weakness of it all. Great cities, towering structures, temples, and very kingdoms fell. And after decades of war, Jagatai finished it, mounting the Palatine's Emperor's head over his tent. His conquest oh. was complete. He got the big guy, the, the, the final boss, he won against the final boss, he got it. But peace never lasts. F we already learned that from the curse lore video. <laughs> Far upon the horizon, in Chagoros' azure skies, a golden eagled stormbird descended from the sky. Jagatai's life was about to change. Hot hair is here. The Imperium. Of a man. Yes. When explanations are hard to produce, lie after lie comes shining through. Truth gets locked away. For reasons only known to yourself, truth may hurt, but the lie hurts more. One lie to cover another. What was the first lie? Can you remember? So oh. much hurt, and too many lies. What's the truth? Will I ever know? Can I ever separate the two? The Khan remains static. Actually, yeah, you start with one lie, you keep going, they pile up, eventually can't even remember where it started and what is the truth anymore. It's fair enough, can't even find the truth anymore. The lie after lie, or like, yeah, there, there, there's a lot. There, there's a lot. But at the same time, is that Malkador, the Sigilate, 
Malkad or the hero? Not yet the hero, but will be eventually. <laughs> Like one of those age-darkened statues that stalked the shadows of that place, he saw rows of them against the far wall, each cowled and bearing a staff, mirror images of the living fossil that addressed him now. I have conquest in my blood, the Primarch said. I have always hungered for it. Only now I know that you planted the desire there. You made me as an instrument of your own designs. We are all instruments. Except for him. Oh no, very much him. The Sigilite play- <gasps> the Did he just say that even the Emperor is one? Oh! Placed his thin hands together. Listen, I understand the problem. You were monarchs of your worlds, and now we ask you to fight for this one. You were never given the tutelage we had planned, and so- this voice is perfect. This voice is perfect for Malkador. Like, look at this old man. This old, actually very extremely powerful man. He may look like an old feeble man, but this man can choke horse. This man could kill horse with his, with his like, psychic power. That's how strong he is, <laughs> despite how feeble and old he is. He was the only man strong enough as a psyker to power up the golden throne in the, like, in the Emperor's absence. Even though he got burnt to a crisp in the process, he was the only one that could even do it for that long, or at all, maybe even in the first place. So he's awesome. Now we ask you to fight for this one. You were never given the tutelage we had planned, and so the wrench is sudden. If we could postpone the crusade for a hundred years in order to prepare you adequately, we would do so, but we cannot. For we race against the closing door of fate. All must be gathered in. But remember this, you are a son of terror. You are ah. made here. I was made on Chogoris. The Sigilite smiled. I should put that keening self-pity behind you if you wish to earn the allegiance of your new army. The Khan turned on him. After building that whole brotherhood of, like, tribal people, it's so messed up to just basically tell him, yeah, forget about all of them. Just, you have a new army of new people that you've never met. So, yeah, those are your people now. <laughs> Unclasping his arms as if he wished to draw his blade. It is all a lie, he said fervently. Every part of it will be burning their temples and executing their priests in return for a million worlds. All as ignorant as beasts. Is that what you wanted? It is necessary. We could tell them the truth. Do not be foolish. The Khan's lips curled in disgust. So much contempt for your own species. Yes, contempt! Snapped the Sigilite. If you had seen what I have seen, watched what a human may become when left alone in the dark, you would share it. He I hate that notion, though. I hate that notion. That you've been through so much that you have to become this hateful, spiteful person about people and stuff. That you've seen what people can do, so you have to spite them because of their dark potential. I hate that notion. I, I don't I don't like that. At all. Himself. You were lucky, Jagatai. Your world was no Caliban. We tell you of old night and you barely believe us. But that is not how most places were. The lie is noble. It is there to protect, to guard, not to deceive. For they are not ready. The Khan turned away. Stalking further into the shadows, there were other tombs there, smooth with age, the names on the surface is impossible to read. I have heard this before, the Primarch said. There what? were empires on my homeworld that offered freedom to their slave castes, but only when they were ready. That moment, strangely enough, never came. In the end, they had to take it for themselves. Oh, that's a that's also a very fair point that he's making. Yeah, you're saying that they are not ready for it for the truth yet, but maybe someday they will. But at the same time, that's a notion that so many people use as an excuse to prolong something that will never happen in the first place, or at, at least something that will take so long that it will only be detrimental, detrimental instead of actually being like beneficial. So I I kind of like his. I'm okay. I'm a. I, I, even I like sometimes and whatnot. I do. I'm I'm a human. I'm not perfect, but I do like the like the prospect of truth and stuff like that. Even if sometimes there's a lot of 
faucets to the whole like um the, the situation i feel like i am on his side on this one on the on the on the, on the Khan side to die for it even then there were some who said the day had come too soon he looked back at the sigilite the truth will come out you won't be able to hold the blindfold in place and once it slips it will be worse that you did not actually do like try to like ease them into it yourself instead and stuff like that yeah that is very true the fury of those you deceived will be limitless there Malthador we go yeah nodded which is why we rely on you on your exceptional power on your tactical genius it is not enough to conquer the galaxy you must conquer it swiftly bring all under the rule of the throne before the patterns of fate change and we lose this one chance I tell you no falsehood when I say that this is everything. All depends on this. We have mere decades remaining. Just the blink of an eye set against eons to accomplish it. The Khan smiled cynically. And when all is finished, then we will revisit the lie. When all is finished. The Primarch laughed, but there was no mirth in it. He tapped an armored finger idly on the lip of one of the tombs. I wonder some days why you gave us minds at all. Machines would have given you less grief. Less. Ah. Uh, <laughs> oh, it's so true. So much prob. So many problems happen because of the fact that they all have free will and so much power. Less grief, surely. Less joy, too. Malkador sighed and wrapped his cloak tighter around his whip thin body. You have found it hard to understand your father. You wish him to be more intelligible. I understand that. But do not be seduced by the scale of his power. He has sacrificed more than any of us, and he does not use it for himself. A man may pursue a single goal and become the master of that endeavor, only to find himself weakened in all other pursuits. The Emperor battles daily with forces beyond understanding, yet you expect him to retain a mortal sympathy. The Sigilite shook his head. He walks the paths of eternity. Be thankful he is able to converse with you at all. The Khan thought on that, staring pensively at the tomb. And what is gained? If we lose, what are we? What victory? <laughs> oh, that argument, I... You know what? There are some situations where I actually don't like that argument, but there are some where it actually does hit pretty good. Like, yeah, what if we actually lose what we are? In this pur pursuit then what is the point in the end <laughs> like what is even the point anymore Where is that the only one possible said Malkador. but also he's also right in one scenario sometimes you don't have an option anymore <laughs> i cannot believe it then stay speak to him again listen to what he has to say the khan's eyes never left the tomb his gaze sharp as the raptor that had given him his moniker seemed liable to bore into the granite. A tense silence fell across the chamber, broken only by the dull hum that always came up from the distant foundations. The one that made the earth tremble and the atmosphere feel thicker than soup. I suffocate in this place, he said at last. More words won't change that, he looked up. We already have our destination, the world he chose for us. There are enemies I will gladly slay for you. Perhaps when the hunt is underway and I have prey under my blades, I will see the truth of what you say. There is no truth out there that cannot be perceived from here, warned Malkador. Then I will have to come back, said the Khan, already restive. I mean, he's willing though, that's something. Already moving. Someday, when the moment is right, not before. Oh. Very interesting conversation. Oh, I I don't know if I've even seen any Malkador conversation in um the Amber King's video so far. I don't think so. I think this is the first one. But that was the perfect the perfect voice for him. He sounded so smooth and clever and grumpy and fast at the same time. It was the perfect voice for somebody with so much responsibility, age and you know, like experience and other things like that. It, it was perfect. Golden Eagle Stormbird descended from the sky 
and as a procession of large, golden armored warriors made their way into Jagatai's camp, he saw that these strangers possessed technology far beyond anything on Chagoris. From his first moments of sentience, Jagatai knew that he was different, that he was more than the people around him. His intellect, his strength, and in recent years, his towering figure. Yeah, he's very, very tall. Very, very, very tall. Finally, the answers to that very question came as he looked upon his father, the Emperor of Mankind, flanked by an equally large figure, Horus Lupercal. Oh yeah, Horus was with the Emperor. Was he from the very start? I think he might have been with the Emperor from the very start. He like found right away or something, right? To stand before the Emperor is akin to glaring into the heart of a fire, warm and blinding, but with an added sense of welling majesty and wonder. Such perfection, such soul-wrenching glory. I could not hear that perfection part and not think of the Emperor's children and what could have been if they stayed loyal and believed in the perfection that they were chasing rather than the Slanesh nonsense with all of that purple weird coloring everywhere and demons and so much feeling non excess nonsense and disgusting. It would move you to tears, humanity distilled. Even to Jagatai, the superhuman Primarch senses could feel that power. His father had found him. He was a Primarch. One of 20 sons of the Emperor of Mankind. 18. We do not talk about... Tew. The head of a <laughs> galaxy-spanning empire that sought to reunite the lost colonies of mankind across the stars. He was at the head of the Great Crusade, the reconquest of the galaxy, reuniting with his lost sons, and he wanted Jagatai to join. Jo now, there's no way you want to tell me that Horus looked like that even before. Like, this image is showing him with his father. What, who, like, whoever painted it is. But there's no way you, you want to tell me that he looked like that even before his corruption. Like, all of that weird tube and red nonsense. There's no way, right? It, that definitely looked less evil before, when right? The great right? Crusade at the head of an army made from his own genetic material and to conquer the stars. It the was stars. almost overwhelming, but Jagatai did not follow in the footsteps that millions had done before him. He did not throw himself at the feet of this new overlord. Just how he had done throughout his youth, that brilliant mind began to ponder. His father before ponder. him, arrayed with technology that surpassed anything that he had dreamt of, that uh -huh. very technology could transform his world. Also the chance of conquest in the stars, an almost dream offered to a Jagorian. But yet he was an emperor. Jagatai had seen many kings and emperors, all tyrants who eventually became corrupt and complacent. And perhaps worst of all, was there really a choice? What would happen if Jogoris was left in hands that only cared for its compliance? Jagatai knelt before the Emperor and swore his fealty, the pragmatic choice, the lesser evil. The work began in- So interesting that he chose that because of that reason. You know, just because he wanted to like so many of the other Primarchs because he really just wanted to go with his father and learn about himself and his father and the Empire. And everything. Immediately, a call was sent out across the stars. He thought more about his own world, about Chagoris and his people, which I, I love that. For the fifth legion to reunite its splinter forces, their Primarch had been found. The Adeptus Astartes, superhuman warriors created with the meshing of genes he'd grown from Jagatai's own genetic material. Space Marines! Faster, stronger, larger, and more resilient than any mortal man. As a legion gathered in the skies above Chagoris. Also, a lot of them are bald for some reason. I don't know what those things on their head mean, like where I'm pointing, if you can even see it. I know they have some weird, like, nail-looking things in their heads. 
I know they are supposed, I mean, I know what they are supposed to represent. I don't know like, how they work. I know they represent their years or centuries or, of service, right? But I don't know like, if like material and color means anything and stuff like that. Like if there's like silver ones that mean something else and golden ones that mean something else. But if they, they are just all the same and just mean like 100 years for each, I do not actually know. The transformation began below. Target Hai Yasuge, Quinn Shah, Giyu Hun, and Hasek, brothers to Jagatai who had been by his side since the beginning, volunteered to undergo the transformation into Astartes. Many of the friends and Chagorian soldiers loyal to Jagatai would not survive this process. Aww. The success rate for adults was low. Oh yeah, I was gonna say that i was gonna say that like, i don't know why i paused i was gonna say but wait aren't like adults kind of bad for the process they normally take like 12 year olds right so kind of kind of low chances to survive as an adult the whole procedure and the pain was at the very threshold of human tolerance but such was their devotion and loyalty to their khan that thousands endured it as the fifth legion the Star Hunters gathered to Jagoris, and the recruitment of Jagorian Astartes began. Jagatai, Targatai Yasuge, Quinn Shah, and Hasek headed to Terra, the capital of the growing Im Oh, all well, the ones mentioned before survived. Imperium of Man. The Imperial Tide of the Imperium must have been shocking to men who had at most seen stone walls around feudal cities. The smog, the towering structures, the immense overcrowding. This was what Jagatai had to protect his people from. Face to face with the Emperor. Actually, wait, yeah. <laughs> this is the kind of thing he did not want for his people to become like this. And his right hand, Malkador. Jagatai's discomfort grew into outrage. He was asked to be more than a conqueror. He was asked to be an arbiter of a philosophy that challenged the fundamentals of who he and his people were. The Imperial Truth. It was a lie to claim that the universe was an ordered, rational place, an atheistic society, that things beyond human understanding live within the warp was a lie. I mean, yeah, the Imperial Truth was a big lie we all know that we i used to believe that the imperial truth was just about humanity for a time that it was just about humanity not believing in their own religions and gods that they believed in and like the emperor and stuff like that but i did not know it like back back in the day which is not that long ago <laughs> that it was actually about hiding everything and denying everything so yeah, now I have a better grasp on the Imperial Truth. We'll be burning their temples and executing their priests in return for a million worlds, all as ignorant beasts. Is that what you wanted? Truth may hurt, but the lie hurts more. That Especially in the long run. The very so-called lie was integral to who he and the people of Shigoris were. Their Zadrin Arga. The storm seers drew upon that very power of the warp, guided and molded their people by it. It was a power they accepted, put boundaries on, and warded themselves against. Jagatai never lied to his people, never like the emperors and kings on Chogoris had done. He had seen its costs as kingdoms fell. The truth will come out. You won't be able to hold the blindfold in place, and once yeah. it slips, the fury of those you have deceived will be limitless. It was complicated to serve his father, to bow to an emperor, to conquer the stars and reunite humanity, but to burn their churches in the name of a lie. It was the way that they had made him, questioning, pondering, honest. Suffering from the confinement, Jagatai and his son set out for Chagoris. When it comes to his ideals, 
they are probably some of my favorite like genuinely some of my favorite one day the lies will be revisited but for now conquest awaited the white scars here it comes the fast boys the fast men of the Warhammer 40,000k. Not even a mighty war. Not 40,000k. 40k. 40,000. Fear can break a frail arrow when it is multiple. Wait, what? What can break? What? Not even a mighty warrior can break a frail arrow when it is multiplied and supported by its fellows. Yeah, <laughs> no matter how mighty you are and how feeble the arrows are, if there's like a whole shower coming of them on you you are not going to be able to, <laughs> to actually like deflect all of them i mean that's the, that's the same philosophy that works with uh, with the guardsmen with the imperial guard even though their last last guns are so weak in the 40k timeline the, the fact that they just have so many of them makes them basically very strong in numbers so <laughs> it's the same philosophy as long as you brothers support one another and render assistance to one another, your enemies can never gain the victory over you. Yes. But if you fall away from each other, your enemy can break you like frail arrows. I'm kind of weird when it comes to that philosophy. I like strong unity and relying on others like as a thing. But I also like independence and being able to be alone and solo things yourself and being un movable like the like the doom guy for example and stuff like that i think that's also very cool i like both of them i don't i don't like to rely on people like i like the idea of a strong unity but i don't like having to rely on people and, and basically being dead in the water on my own I, I don't like that one at a time if you can see us, we are dangerous indeed. But that is as nothing to the peril you face if you cannot see us. Ah, ha, ha, ha. And all you can hear is our laughter. laughter. Yep, Chagoris. I knew it. Chagoris. He may have been created on terror, but Chagoris had made him. Like some of his brother Primarchs, Jagatai had bargained with the Emperor to leave his homeworld in his hands because he knew that it would be crushed under the tide of uniformity for the Imperium. I also hate like what the Imperium does to so many of its own worlds. I know it might be quote unquote necessary for you know keeping the great machine of war going. But so many worlds, so many lives, so many people, so many... Everything gets ruined in the process. It's, it's such a tragedy. Blood did not matter. It was heart. The spirit of Chagoris that had to be preserved. Culture bound men together. Just as how he had bound the numerous tribes of the Empty Quarter under the banner of his Mathuli. The Fifth Legion. The Star Hunters. Sons born on terror. The laughing killer. Veterans of the ongoing Great Crusade were ordered down to the surface. I mean, the, the white scars, the, the new one. I mean, the new ones. The new, the new ones. And stood side by side with their newly elevated brothers from Chagoris. Thousands of soldiers, each bound with Jagatai's blood within them. But blood was not enough for Jagatai. Over 50,000 men assembled on the plains of Chagoris. Their Primarch stood before them. The enormous, powerful presence of Jagatai awakening something within them all. Each Astarte, Terran and Chagorn were presented with a ritual blade, dipped in a poison designed to suppress their healing abilities. 50,000 men marked the form of a jagged scar across their cheek. Oh wait, that's that's why they all have scars. That's how the the, the, the ritual With goes. The wound still fresh. They discarded their old names, for that man was dead. Each chose a new name to mark his ascension into the horde of Jagatai, the Kagan. Their old way of life was gone. They were now one army, one brotherhood, one legion. They swore oaths to their Kagan and to each other. As long as you brothers support one another and render assistance to one another, 
Your enemies can never gain the victory over you. I'm kind of curious what the white scars were like before they found their uh, their primark cuz I saw a comment on like on some weird random YouTube video at some point about the guy saying that he's like in like really in love with um, I think it was the blood angels from before the the founding of the like, before they found the primark before they found Sanguinius which makes me think like all of these legions, what all of them were like before they found their Primark. I'm very curious about that. They were one. They were the Talscar, clad in white. And now they set out to the stars to conquer the galaxy. Jagatai's molding of his legion continued. He began to incorporate his ethos and tactics from what he had learned in his time on the steppe. Attack and then retreat, shock and awe. The fifth legion will be the Okay, what is that helmet? That helmet looks awesome! The first in, and then the first out. They would attack with such blinding speed that all resistance would be washed away in a tide. World upon world would find this enormous, looming force blacken their skies, only to realize in their horror that they were already under assault. As a wave of superhuman warriors, clad in gleaming white armor, with an enormous figure leading them would smash them apart. Whooping cries and cheers would be heard over the thunder of jet bikes and land speeders, as the spirit and heart of Chagoris sung through its warriors. Even mm -hmm. their weapons and armor was adapted to fit their way of war. The Legion's colossal naval ships were modified to Jagatai's own specifications. He had been but a mere tribal warrior before. The bow and warhorse were his tools, but his mind had soaked in the complexity of the Imperium's technologies to a level where he could adapt it. The Dao Sword, the Tolwa Dagger, the Guan Dao Glaive, all deadly pieces of iron forged in the plains or reforged into steel and ceramite power weapons. I also like that, that he basically got uh, an understanding of the technology and adapted it to his own culture. So the, the Legion got a lot of the personality of Chagoris instead of just being like using normal Imperium issued stuff. Even Jagatai's personal guard, his Keshig, adapted their Terminator armor for increased mobility. It was the Terminator. Terminator armor. I almost said Terminator. <laughs> Terminator armor with modifications for increased mobility. But I mean, isn't the whole point of that armor to be slow, sluggish, and basically nigh indestructible? Indestructible, I mean. Because I, I thought that's the whole point. Of, I mean, I know there's like there was a, there were people that were able to like walk fast or even run in Terminator armor, like that one Space Wolf guy. Was it was it the Chapter Master? I, I think it was him. So, yeah, that's a thing that can happen. That, that is true. But modifying it to be able to be fast in that as a general kind of thing, that's crazy. The way we made you. Words of Malkador that never seemed to leave his thoughts. Conquest was in his blood, but it was in the heart of the Chagorians. Their love of battle was unparalleled. Just as the sensation of adrenaline and freedom had gripped Jagatai, mounted upon the plains of Chagoris, it was tapped into by all of the Fifth Legion. Imagine the speed, the power, the sensation of slicing apart your enemies with your blades. An exhilaration that would leave you grinning ear to ear. That, I mean, that means that the White Scars are probably some of the best melee fighters in the Imperium, right? Out of all the legions, they are at least, they have to be at least top 5 or 3, right? Because of the fact that they are fo so fast and melee focused on using melee weapons, right? But they were more than just the savage visage they displayed. Jagatai began to encourage his sons to be more, to delve into such things as calligraphy, hunting, and the telling of ancient tales. Oh, that is so beautiful. He's encouraging his legion to actually be more, well, human, more cultured, rather than just killers. I love that so much. That is so great. That Just like, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was the case. I, I kind of forgot. But I think... 
probably it was also the Emperor's children that did things like that, that they dabbled into more human activities as well. The society that separates its scholars from its warriors will have its thinking done by cowards and its fighting by fools. The 5th Legion fully joined the Great Crusade, with Targetai Yasuge, Quin Sha, Giyu Hun, and Hasek by his side. He disagreed with his father on the fate of humanity about lying to them, so he distanced himself from it. He would follow his own path. The 5th Legion began to disperse. Like an uncurling hand, the figures outstretched to spread their grip on the stars. Each unit led by a son Jagatai trusted completely. The 5th Legion spread from war zone to war zone, utilizing their lightning fast raid tactics to overwhelm the horrifying Xenos and non compliant colonies of mankind. They begun to conquer at such frightening speed, they even outpaced Imperial reinforcements. And <laughs> coincidentally, the delegation sent directly from the Imperial Palace. The greater the distance from terror and its influence, the more free Jagatai felt. It did not matter if he received less glory, less praise from his father. Wait, that's... Oh, wait, that's actually... Something that I actually wanted to talk about, um, that I know that the White Scars are not as out there, not, they cannot basically scream in their accomplishments as much as other legions, and more, like I said at the start, more in the background, more doing their own thing. But I did not know this is the reason, because he wanted, like, Jagatai wanted to distance himself because of all the lies and all the stuff that basically from the fact that he, dis he, he does not believe in the same vision as his father. So he wanted to distance himself from all of that. Oh! His legion, his culture, and his way of life mattered more. They became a rumor. A legion who were gone before you could understand or interact with them. They were the superhumans, clad in white, bearing scars on their cheeks. Speaking in their strange tongue, they were the White Scars. Sanguinius and Jagatai Khan? Oh, I want to see this conversation and I'm not sure why I'm prolonging it so much. But you, you must be pretty upset about the fact that I keep talking instead of listening to it at this point. <laughs> okay, well, let's just do it. Sanguinius came up to his brother, a goblet in each hand, and handed one to the Khan. To fraternity, he said, raising his. The wine was unctuous, heavily spiced, no doubt priceless. You must accept my apologies, the angel said, gesturing towards two immense thrones carved from mahogany and capped with ivory. My herald was mistaken from the outset. They tell me that Star Hunter is a name no longer to be uttered. No apology needed, the Khan said, seating himself awkwardly opposite his brother. Despite himself, he could not help staring at the way the whispering wing quill settled around the angel as he reclined, like a shimmering cloak of silver pinions. It means nothing to us. White Scar, said Sanguinius, amused though not maliciously. Those are the two words now making us talk from Terra to Ultramar. Would it flatter you to know that you are a source of some fascination, brother? That there was a race among us to see who could corner you first? Not especially. No, I <laughs> guess not. You were Talskar. That was the origin of it. The Khan said, for some reason, sitting there in the presence of this dazzling, ethereal presence, he felt there should be some explanation. A livery now as it was on Chogoris is white. They misheard the first, they observed the second. Their words, not ours. Sanguinius shrugged. We're all made into images for them. That is our purpose, you might say. He leaned forward, conspiratorially. And between you and me, he flashed his impossibly handsome smile. I'm not really an angel. The Khan laughed at last. <laughs> and such things are impossible. Or so our father told me. <laughs> okay. Every single time I'll 
every single time I also see Sanguinius, I'm happy. I, I, I also like him a lot. Like he says some really cool things and funny things and nice things and sometimes he kind of tries. I still don't think he tries to the full capabilities of somebody who wants to go all the way and beyond. There are some conversations where I feel he leaves things a bit more, I don't know, generic rather than going into more. He's not exactly that great, very crazy, emotional, like bro brother kind of person. He is a bit more of a, he does act a bit more like a figurehead than just, but he does try. I can see that he does try still. What I what what I feel like is that most of them don't really have the, <laughs> you know the, the connection built and the capability emotionally and mentally to really act like normal brothers and that that close and stuff like that. But let, let's see more. Yes, I had the same conversation with him, somewhat awkwardly in my case. Sanguinius took a sip of wine. I've been hunting you for a while, Jagatai. My compliments. Your legion has learned some ship mastery. I thought my crews were good, but I believe yours could school them. We're used to staying on the move. Clearly, and the destruction of 9212. Impressive. Once I heard you had located the homeworld I made for it, expecting you to be there for some weeks. You fought them before? On Melchior. The knowledge that they are wiped out gives me satisfaction, and they are, I take it, exterminated. All of them, the Khan said darkly. Then I relished the prospect of never hearing them mentioned again. Sanguinius cradled his goblet in the palm of his hand, swilling it absent-mindedly. All Xenos are foul, but my sons developed a particular hatred for those. Then why were you not sent to destroy them? Your pardon? You had the measure of them. The Khan took a swig of his... Fair point. You have, a, you have a grudge against them. I mean, had a grudge against them because they are dead now. But you had a grudge against them. A, a knowledge of them because you faced them before. So why were, why were you not sent to deal with them, actually? His own. We used intelligence your legion had gathered. I wonder why you were not sent to finish the task. The angel shrugged. We had other battles. I've not been doing this for as long as you, but I'm not slow with it. He placed his goblet beside him and leaned forwards in the throne. Oh, is he gonna say something? Is he gonna say something? We were sent there to witness the depravities of devotion. Through this, we were enjoined to understand the wisdom of the Imperial truth. You do not see the need for it. I'm yet to be convinced. I'd heard the rumors. This is where you tell me that I need to understand the necessity. I would love if Sanguinius actually has a real heart to heart and says something along the lines of what uh, the Khan also believes in. Because he knows the, the future. He knows about chaos. He knows about all of that. He's one of the ones that is very in the know. So I would, I would love a heart to heart about all of that from them too. That we shield them for their own good and that the deceptions are noble. For all that, they remain an illusion. Sanguinius said nothing for a while. He looked at his brother thoughtfully, the last of his smile dying away. You have psychers in your legion? He said at last. Of course. A librarius. Of a kind. Then that is already a refutation. The angel said. The populace can believe our powers are bounded by science. Even our generals, if they want to. We know it isn't. The Khan looked at his brother warily, as if cautious to avoid some kind of trap. And what do you suppose that leaves us with? I will not debate with you of gods and monsters. The angel said. But the Psyker cannot be avoided. Already there are those among us who wish to see them banished, shut away or blunted, lest they unlock something fouler within us. Those voices are growing stronger. Despite what you may believe, my wayward brother, the throne listens to its sons. One day, if we are careless, we will lose all these things, and then we will be the ones at fault, for we did nothing. The Khan looked skeptical. I care nothing for what another Primarch does. They won't stop at their own legions. Sanguinius remained reclined, 
almost languid. But it is so true. It's he's making a, for a second. I was actually I was agreeing. I was with him, but I felt a shiver down my spine all of a sudden because I just realized the full gravity of what he's actually saying. The fact that it is all actually true, because the legions will do that. It will happen. What was I forgot the name? The the, the whole thing that is gonna happen where they basically ban psychers or something like that. It's actually gonna happen. It's true. It's gonna happen. It did not happen yet, but it is. So what Sanguinis is saying right now is 100% true. It will happen and not stop at only one legion. It is true. His pristine yes. golden robes catching the candlelight. For a Puritan, there is no comfort in scouring one's own house. All houses must be made clean. You are on your own, Jagatai, heading further into the void. An empire onto yourself, so you don't hear the whispers. And I care nothing for whispers. You know what the problem with whispers is? Sometimes they can travel a long distance and a lot of people can hear them that way compared to just the ones that would normally hear them in their vicinity because it's whispers. But they can be carried. So there can, the number can grow and bad things can happen and they will happen. Sanguinius snorted. You should. I've seen worlds destroyed by them. Yes. Yes, the true. Yes. They are more dangerous than so many people want to believe. Very true. Indeed. Stop me, good people. Don't you see my temper is running away with me? Help, master common sense. Are you afraid? Good mistress, prudence, come to my aid. Stop me, conscience. Stop me, I pray. My temper, my temper is running away. I still don't understand what these parts... Every, like, every, like, recent Primark video I've seen had this kind of, like, um, parts... But I don't know what they are, what they mean. Like what these quotes actually are. They sound like like rhymes, like some kind of poetry. But like, what exactly are they? Dear brother, kindness, snatch after the reins. Help, or my temper will dash out my brains. Help, oh. Or I'll get a terrible fall. Help, shame, caution, love, wisdom, and all. I've never desired fellowship with any of you. Do not take that as pride, more like necessity. I find obligation to others difficult. Fraternity, all alone on Jagoris. Jagatai had seen that he was different from his people. He was more than just a mortal man. With the coming of the Emperor, that idea of being unique had changed forever. Twenty Primarchs, brothers, crafted from the Emperor's own genetic material. Superhumans destined to be the generals of the Great Crusade, reuniting humanity under one banner. As the decades passed in his service to the Imperium, it was inevitable that his past would cross with one of them, a brother, an equal. Horus had been there on Jogori. Oh, there we go. This is what I expected Horus to look like before his corruption. Not that weird cube red kind of look, but this more, more mighty look, not, not evil look. The sight of him must have been intriguing. Just to be in his presence, you could feel his charisma shine. Horus saw beneath the facade of the savage, seeing the cunning, quiet intelligence. More interactions came over the decades. Sanguinius, Primarch of the Blood Angels, was an encounter hard to forget. His warming face, his ethereal presence, something made even Jagatai, the calm and closed off man, want to speak. His oh. brother had accepted his need for isolation, but warned that events inside the Imperium couldn't be ignored forever. And then Magnus the Red. Pro Finally, Magnus the Nerd. I know they build some kind of connection. The Mark of the Thousand Sons. Both Magnus and Jagatai's life had been shaped by sorcery. 
Magnus the Gifted One himself, the scholar who wielded the power of the warp to incredible heights. And Jagatai's life on Chogoris was guided and nurtured by his Zadrin Aga. I still wonder, how did the Emperor make somebody that turned out red somehow for some reason? I'm not sure if I heard the reason anywhere, but I forgot if I did. Why, why is he red? Everybody looks normal humanoid, but like big? Even though Jagatai Khan is like, again, like Mongolian looking weirdly. I guess they have more than just the, like the, the Emperor's genetic material. Maybe they have uh, more added in to basically give them a bit of the her like heraldry of the, of, the, of the races. Like, again, like the Mongolians, fast, all of that stuff. Unless there's more to it, I, I don't know. The Storm Seers, the cultural rock of his people and their traditions, philosophy, and way of life. He had been guided by Shinaz, perhaps his closest friend in the universe, his teacher and mentor who followed him to the stars, becoming Targotai Yasuge. Jagatai respected Magnus, as the two had so much in common. To his other brothers, he was a mystery, something he intended to keep that way. Fraternity was obligation, and he has always wanted to escape obligation. Walls made him feel suffocated, be they physical or mental. Even his taste was different, compared to the lavish and ornate displays that every legion seemed to display in their weaponry, their armor, and their ships. Simple stretched hides, Chagorian pelts, and humble tribal food with the choice of the warhawk. Okay, I don't know about the the food. I don't know about that. But when it comes to the to like the, their armors and their weapons, they look pretty ornate to me. Unlike many of his brothers, pretty ornate. Jagatai had truly bonded to his people. To each Primarch and Jagatai, they'd always felt in some way removed from humanity. I still really hate this white bar at the, at the right side. I I hate that so much. They were born rulers. They were saviors. They experienced the loneliness that comes from leadership, magnified by their magnanimous stature and earth-shattering presence. But to Jagatai, he did his best to be an equal. He was the Kagan, but he never put himself beyond the scrutiny of those who served him. The Kural Tai, a council where all were free to voice their thoughts as equals. A tradition born in the steppe, and retained on the galactic scale. Despite being a Primarch, Targatai Yasuge, Quin Sha, Giyu Hun, and Hasek were more like brothers than sons. He had them and their council, so he had no void in his heart to fill. They understood where the rest of the Imperium misunderstood. Is something bad gonna happen to those to those people. Even their livery of Tal Scar was lost to ignorance and disinterest. The outsiders named them White Scars because of their lack of understanding. The fifth sailed further and further into the void of the stars, content within their own company. As more worlds came under the shadow of the White Scars, Jagatai finally began to see more of what Malkador and the Emperor had tried to make him understand on terror. Old Night, the collapse of humanity spanning federation across the stars. A wound in the psyche of the civilization that remembered those frightful days. One of the justifications for the Great Crusade was to protect the future of humanity, to unify it under one banner, to protect it from a slow decay. Devoured by ourselves and the horrifying Xenos that hid in the dark corners of space, Chagoras' society had collapsed millennia before, reverting to a feudal-like existence where the scars of old night were forgotten. It was only within the Great Crusade to Jagatai finally understand the horrors of what Malkador had warned of. Xenos. They were disgusting.
There's also demons and chaos. During the emancipation of Droon, they encountered a range of horrifying creatures of barely definable form. Though all these creatures had in common bloated bodies that floated on invisible etheric tides, multiple eyes, thrashing tendrils, and the ability to unleash fearsome blasts of warp energy as they threw hordes of mind-controlled humans at them, treating humanity as if it were a thing to be controlled, like mindless slaves. There's so much complexity though to, that, to this whole situation, because we don't even know. Maybe some worlds were just normal worlds, even though they look scary, maybe they were just you know, a normal society of aliens. We attacked them, they took us as slaves. There's, it, there's possibilities of stuff like that happening and not them being the bad guys right off the bat. But we don't really accept that idea. We kind of just go and kill everybody we can <laughs> and say it's their fault for existing in the first place. <laughs> so that's kind of that's, that's kind of bad, I would say. Even Giriman got to somewhat understand how wrong it was to just kill some species just, just because they are aliens rather than giving them any benefit of the doubt. Trait Jagatai had despised in the kings and emperors on Chagoris. Perhaps the emperor was right. Humanity had to be protected from this desecration and horror. But though many Xenos made the Wise Scars curse their name in disgust, for others they held a different view. Orcs, the Greenskins, the hulking beasts whose love of war matched the Jagorians. Also, it's a very fair point that they are kind of similar in that way. They both love to fight, and that's similar, yeah. Whooping cheers of High Tagoris met a screaming green tide on thousands of worlds throughout the decades of the Great Crusade. To have a worthy foe was everything to them, and Jagatai and the White Scar's blades were slick with alien blood. Smiles dominated their faces as no test was more worthy. Though this fervorous slaughter that Jagatai and the Legion was bathing in would change in a sobering moment. What happened? What the heck? Did one of them, like one of his frosted people die or something? Side by side, the White Scars and the Lunar Wolf stood, cleansing another Orc Horde. The campaign had been brutal, and the encirclement of the Orcs capsule had taken weeks of mind-numbingly brutal warfare. Uh -huh. Jagatai and his White Scars utilized their speed to break apart and disorientate the enemy's line, whilst the slow, unstoppable tide of the Lunar Wolves crushed the weakened and confused Orcs. Encircled and flattened by a mountain's worth of bombardment, the Imperial forces prepared for the final assault, with Quinn Shah, Kiyu Hun, and Hasek and Sir Janus of the Lunar Wolves by his side. Jagatai raced and- Actually, imagine if not one of them dies, but all of them. Imagine that. battle, a Primarch at the forefront of an unstoppable, lightning-fast wedge. A movement he had taken from the plains and improved with the strength of Legione's Astartes. Fighting their way into the Orcs' capital, the clash began. To stand at its center, the cacophony of noise, heat, and blood would overwhelm you. Fighting with every ounce of strength and ferocity, the Orcs were being pushed back until Giyu Han Khan, one of Jagatai's oldest friends, a man who had followed him from the plains to- Oh, imagine even worse. If that guy does not actually, um, like, get killed. Okay, my two theories, my first one, my main one is that one of them, or more of them, or all of them get killed. That's my first theory. My second one is that one of them betrays them, gets corrupted, something of that sort. The stars overextended. Jagatai screamed over. Wait, what happened? Planes to the stars his friends, a man who had followed him from the plains to the stars, overextended. Jagatai screamed over the battle for him to pull back. First in, first out. The Giyuhan held. His wounds were pouring, 
and in the melee rush, he was knocked back, falling into the emerging magma pouring throughout the holes of the previously bombarded surface. So he died. He... I guess that was the one that makes the most sense, yes. Jagatai halted, rushing over to catch the last moment of his friend, sinking into his blazing death. Jagatai stood frozen. That was the first time he lost one of his original buddies, yeah, so would you expect any better reaction even though he's a Primarch? That was like one of his biggest themes was that compared to like many of the other Primarchs, he brought people from his homeworld that he trusted like actual brothers more than his normal genetic brothers. So actually watching one of them die for the first time in this, like after becoming Astartes, Oh. And then with a scream that could shatter eardrums, he ordered everyone to pull away. Something had awoken within him. He broke into a run, first heavily, measuring his strokes, and then accelerating faster and harder until he had moved into that state the Chagorian sages called Alach Gech. The quiet smile had gone. The quiet cunning had gone. All that was left was the cold rage. His speed kept increasing. He became a blur, too fast for the human eye. He was a hidden behind a curtain of severed flesh and thrown blood. A primordial force burning through the ranks of Xenos. The orcs, a dull-witted, primitive race. It sounds like so, like such an awesome thing to behold, even though you probably see almost nothing, just a just the flesh of the enemies <laughs> and the blood flying around. I wonder if this whole state is some kind of like some like some of his uh like um warp like potential. Because again, like when it comes to the humanoid side of him, can he really move that fast on his own? Or is it actually some of his warp like hidden inside potential? His only reason for life was war began to run. Their encoded love for battle, overwhelmed by the onslaught. Eventually the screams faded away, and all that remained was wow. Jagatai, covered in alien gore. I've seen a short about this before, I think. Because I remember something about this. It must have been like witnessing a god fight. Breathtaking, haunting, life altering. It was the way we made you. The words of Malkador echoed in his mind. Stop me, good people. Don't you see? My temper is running away with me. Had they placed that rage within him? He was a son of Chagoris. Chagoris had made him, but perhaps he was more a creation of terror. More a designed tool. Gyu Hun was dead. Others had passed over the numerous decades of the Great Crusade. But a friend? But I mean, no matter how you look at the situation, your anger in that moment, it's not a product of your genetic stuff. It's... I feel like any normal person would be angry and go crazy in a situation like that. One of the men who at least any loving person who had been by Jagatai's side since the beginning. He Most, confided in maybe. Yasugai. They knew that many of them would perish in this war. In fact, death on the battlefield was a fate they all desired. Yet the sting still hurt. Even to the superhuman warriors. Even to a Primarch. Following the joint compliant act. Kind of crazy, isn't it? That you wish you die in battle, but then when you actually do, all the people around are kind of miserable by you being dead. So instead of being happy, we're like, oh, he died the way he wanted in battle. We're like all depressed instead. Jagatai and the Legion returned to Jagoris. Quan Zhu, the Legion's fortress, built high in the Kumkatra Mountains was the only speck of imperial influence and industrialization. Jagatai had ensured that the people of Chogoris were left to their way of life. It kept them strong, ideal for recruitment, and their traditions were not swallowed up under the tide of imperial conformity. Yes. For their Kagan to return, it was a time for celebration 
and rest. A brief time where Jagatike has still roamed the plains once more, with Yasugai and Hasek taking in the sensation of freedom that he had enjoyed so much in his youth. It had all changed so much. One thing that all of them, even Jagatai, struggled with was the passage of time. They were all older. They had now lived multiple human lifetimes. Everything dies. Words from Yasugai Jagatai knew to be true, but deep down he knew he would outlive them all. Something that saddened him greatly. Aww. Returning to Quan Zhu, the Legion rested, even taking time to participate in his Tragorian traditions. Jubal Khan, a rising star within the Legion, caught the eye of the Kagan, showing his prowess in an incredible duel, fighting with the methods of blinding speed and engaging and then falling back. Even his Chagorian was perfect, yet this was a son of terror. It was a hopeful sight. Jagatai's plan had worked, his unifying of the Star Hunters and the Talscar. Oh yeah, so that whole thing actually did work out in the end. But not all born of terror fit so neatly. Others, born in that distant world, found themselves to be outcasts and sought a place of belonging, a pl okay, not all of place them. where rank and homeworld didn't matter, a place in the warrior lodges. Hold on no more, okay, we're gonna stop here for now. I know, um, we've been going for 1 hour and 30 minutes and we're not even an hour into the actual video. But yeah, I, I actually, if you're curious about like what's going on with my channel i have an update video that came out not many videos before this one you can check that one out and see that i actually got a job and because of that i have to i don't have the time to react to like the two hours and 30 minute videos in one go that i personally kind of extend to like another quarter of that in total like in the total like the, the, the video time because of how much i talk for now so um we're gonna split it up i mean, I mean even before i split it up many times for many videos so we're gonna do that because yeah for now i'm enjoying this a lot he's a very neat interesting character compared to many of the primarchs in my opinion i like so much about him and his view on the whole world and Imperium and Galaxy and Morals. So I can't wait to see more. But for now, thank you for watching this video. And if you enjoyed watching it, punch the like button with everything you have and have a great day or night. But but for now, farewell and bye bye.